Welcome back to the show, everybody. We're going to talk about the chosen ones on this day. That's right. Sunday, bloody Sunday. It's a crypto bloodbath. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Dig Perspectives at the top of the screen and everything that we're talking about here today. And don't forget to follow us at Digital Perspectives, no spaces on TikTok. I'm telling you, that page is growing so quickly right there with the highlight reels and highlight clips that we're putting out. Make sure you check us out. $1.681 trillion market cap this morning, ladies and gentlemen. I love the smell of crypto in the morning. It is highly volatile, high risk asset market market and the whole market is bleeding heavily right now bitcoin 34,800 plus ethereum is 2500 plus and we see at the number six spot xrp is 57 cents oh i said it if it goes to 55 i'm gonna sell my own shoes I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I tell you, I do know what's going on. It is the suppression, I believe, because of the lack of clarity. It is the SEC, the United States, broadly weighing heavily on this market with the lack of clarity. And it is having a susp- suppression effect across the entire market, as well as the fact that we see the U.S. Uh, SEC suing Ripple directly over XRP doesn't help matters. But You know, this is a moment where we've all been using the last couple years as the understanding to buy the suppression of this and buying the dip, as they say, because of the fundamental news that holds the market down. And that's what I'm continuing to do. But today we are going to talk specifically about what I believe are two chosen ones and not financial advice. But I think we're going to look at some fundamental news that points us right in that direction. And the case is one of them. So keep that in mind. And right now, just to show you, people understand that there is suppression in the market and they're taking advantage of it. There is only 1,400 shares basically right here, just under 1,500 shares left a ripple on the board at link2.com right now. And it will not last long because people understand what this opportunity of this moment is for the private equity and the assets, I believe. Again, not financial advice. I'll put a link underneath the video. Take a look at these gas fees right here for Ethereum. Not exactly a solution for the future. And I found this to be very funny this morning. It was John Deaton sharing this and said, I bet even Vitalik Buterin finds this humorous. Shows him as a very old man and says, Ethereum 2.0 finally ships. (laughs) I got news for you. If it doesn't, these fees are not sustainable. Now, I don't know what they technically call the validators that process the transactions for Ethereum network, but I think I call them pirates. Yeah, that's what I call them. Here's a reminder very quick. We touched this. I'm going to touch it very quickly again because it is extremely important. And trust me when I tell you, this ain't over by a long shot. The Central African Republic is under scrutiny from financial analysts, entrepreneurs, and the IMF drawing unfavorable comparisons with El Salvador's Bitcoin project. This is not over, ladies and gentlemen. The IMF and other governments do not want to see Bitcoin as legal tender around the world. And I don't think that that conversation's over. And I don't think the maxis, the Bitcoin maxis of the world were really hearing Chris Larson when he took up the calls solely himself to say Bitcoin needs to move from proof of work to proof of stake People said, oh, Chris Larson was being the maxi. But the reality is, is he was trying to help the Bitcoin maxis because there is some kind of collaborative effort, I believe, coming against proof of work and they better make a change. It's not necessary. That's the truth. Right here is Rosie Rios, the 43rd treasurer of the United States and a Ripple board member saying it's good to connect with old friends at the White House with the current president. Over her shoulder here. You have to wonder, is that a personal trip with some casual business attached to it? Was the conversations of the cross-border payments from Ripple uh, a part of her conversations and visiting there? 
And was she talking about all the new corridors that are open here? Look at that. They've been busy while they've been sued by the United States SEC. There's a whole world out here, ladies and gentlemen. And this shows to me, again, what I have, I think, properly deemed the ripple squeeze play here is that they are building enough partners and customers and corridors around the world to drive utility and liquidity across the network, driving XRP price much higher at some point. And when they do, I believe the US SEC, the court system, the government, the legislative bodies will have no choice but to acknowledge the undeniable truth that XRP is a bridge asset and virtual currency. Here's a reminder here just how long Ripple has been pounding the ground and understanding that a revolution comes from within to the point that I'm making about the cross border. This is Ryan Zagone sitting beside the one and only, under suspicion, Joseph Lubin. And listen to what he says about their clear understanding about how to work in the financial system. And this, I believe, just as much as the case against Ripple was used as a weapon for the advantage of a, a, a handful of others to try to create a monopoly with Ethereum, I also believe that it is a part of the legal journey that it must take to get legal precedent so the asset and the technology can be clearly defined as to who is accountable and who is responsible when all the money moves across the network. Let's hear Ryan Zagone tell it to you, too trust you. Um, I don't think we're, I don't think we've built sophisticated enough reputation systems so that we don't need um, the regulators to protect the consumer at this point. In our, in our view, when a, a regulator asks a financial institution who is validating your transactions, who's mm. operating your system, it's not a sufficient answer to say we don't know. Mm. The financial institution... Can't, you, can't you say we don't have to know? Maybe someday. Maybe. Potentially, but that's not, not now, where, where we're at now. Banks and regulators themselves want the certainty of knowing who is responsible for security, operational resiliency, and how the network will behave if something goes wrong. Like who's responsible uh, for, for correcting an error? And those are questions that are, are essential when we're looking at market infrastructure. We have to answer those within the design of the system. Um, in, in our view, we hold that quite firmly, and that's why we've designed the system we have designed at Ripple, uh, which is, to clarify, not based on Bitcoin, which mm -hmm. completely separate from, from Bitcoin and, and that development. Uh, but we, we hold that quite firmly, that we, a bank needs to know, and a network operator should be held responsible for the operation of the system. Absolutely. And speaking of that, the network, network operator, which is really a modern day pirate for Ethereum, is not going to work for a bank at that cost. I can tell you that, too. You don't have to be in the biz to know that answer. All right, so now let's take a look at this because this really goes to what I want to talk about today. And it is Ripple partner Novati to launch Australian dollar stablecoin on the Stellar network also, bringing interoperability through Novati to everything. I tell you, you know, I've said it many times, XRP, XLM, I believe are certainly two of the chosen networks out here out of the tens of thousands of projects that exist. And let's take a look at this very quickly because it is exciting news for Stellar and what they're doing. And I think ultimately this plays to XLM, XRP being huge backbones to the internet of value as we move forward with the financial fourth industrial revolution. Novati is an Australian fintech company that just announced that it will be launching an Australian dollar-backed stablecoin called AUDC. The launch of AUDC will be on the Stellar blockchain, which is a network that is known for its support for stablecoins thanks to its fast speed, low transaction costs, and its interoperability with other blockchains. Understanding now that obviously Jeb McCaleb a head of Stellar, co-creator of the XRP Ledger, for those that are not aware, took the code from the XRP Ledger with him when he started Stellar. It's not hard to understand just how interoperable it can be. Since the coin will be backed with a fiat currency, the fintech company hopes that it will be able to be used to satisfy the high demand for stable coins within the industry. The firm believes that this is where the industry is headed as the demand continues to grow and businesses are looking for a way to utilize blockchain in their existing payment methods. And I wanted to show this. This is obviously an announcement here from Stellar. But what I wanted to get into here is, and I don't have to read the article because 
because you get the gist of it, but I have this thread that I want to go over with you because it is important. And it says here, on June 8, 2022, Stellar Public Network validators will vote on whether to upgrade the network to Protocol 19. And that means, if accepted, Protocol 19 will activate technical changes that make it easier to build payment channels, bridges to other blockchains, and key recovery solutions on Stellar. It says here, what's new in Protocol 19 implements two core advancement proposals named CAP-21 and CAP-40, and they have further details, which I'm not going to get into, but you can read it. Obviously, I've retweeted it on my, on my Twitter profile or go to Stellar. And it says here, what is Protocol 19 designed to do? Check this out. You're going to love all of this. The Protocol 19 changes are designed to facilitate the creation of payment channels, which are layer two protocols support high throughput use cases. How high? You're about to find out. SDF engineers used a sandbox dev net to build a working payment channel prototype called Starlight to test out all the Protocol 19 changes. The results were pretty amazing. Listen to the results. In testing using consumer hardware, listen to this, test using consumer hardware hardware, and residential internet connections, Starlight was able to handle 1.19 million payments per second between two users. That is huge. June 8th is just around the corner to prep. I can tell you right now, I have been obviously accumulating XRP and XLM for years and I am very excited about this news, and it's not financial advice, obviously, but I am extremely excited, and I'm trying to use all of this opportunity to continue to deepen my accumulations in my portfolio. Let's take a look at what the market and the technical analysts are saying now that we see that fundamental news on the horizon here just for Stellar, and we certainly know for XRP as well for cross-border. Looking at this, Dark Defender tells us, looking at the Bitcoin chart, which does right now have dominance over the market, so that's why we're looking at it. He says, most of us are expecting the altcoin bull run, right? So considering the last ones, the error can start between June and July, he says, take a look at Bitcoin's correction wave C, which is the key to altcoins jump. Bitcoin target support 28 and 19.5 for a price for supports here. Wow. I mean, it can re this market could really bleed off even further now, right? I mean, just take a look at this. We are, where did it, where do we say we are this morning? 34. And talking about support levels could come all the way down to, uh, what do you say here? 19,000 or 25? I mean, the market can bleed off another ten plus thousand dollars off of Bitcoin. Be prepared, ladies and gentlemen. This is not for the faint of heart out here. You know, it really is not. And make sure that you're in a position that you can afford to watch where all of this is going, even if it is down. XRP analysis now from Crypto Bull says we are still holding the January, February 2021 highs as support. We are also still making higher lows, he says. If we see a reversal here, the next stop should be around $5. However, we have to keep in mind exactly what Dark Defender said, because if the dominance of Bitcoin remains, which it has, and it continues to fall, then we're going to need to see what happens when we get to those support levels before we'd ever have a chance going up, you know, based on previous history of markets and how they follow Bitcoin. Then we would need to see those support levels met and then bounce back off of those before we'd have a chance to see that lagging indicator of the alt market kick in. That's where we are on this day. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. I appreciate all the technical analysis out here and the, the analysts that cover the market. It is extremely difficult to cover a market this nascent and this early and when most of the market doesn't have true price discovery. But nonetheless, I do appreciate them. And coupled with all the fundamental news that's on the horizon, we must pay attention to the two to see at some point where that crossroads and that intersection of the two, the technical analysis and the fundamental news will meet.
That's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Don't forget, 9.30 this morning, I'm going to be on Facebook. That's right. Digital Perspectives News on Facebook. Don't forget to catch us there. We'll see you soon. Catch you on the next one.